Okay, let me get this pulled up. So I can see the comments. This is gonna be a pretty one today. We're gonna use an ombre uh, mesh that came from the wreath shop, I believe. But it is gorgeous. And so, um, I think it's going to be great. We're going to use the I'm in the garden sign today and we're going to pair it with some stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, today I have cut, this is my um, 21 inch wreath mesh. Um, I wanted to show it to you. So this is what it looks like. It goes from green to almost a rust, real dark rust color. So, um, hi Donna, hi Mary and Judy. So, I cut my mesh to 20 inches today. And the beautiful thing about this, and using this technique to uh, make your mesh, is look how lacy that's gonna be and we're getting all the colors, so it's gonna be really easy to see the colors today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. 21 inch mesh cut to 20 inches. We're gonna fold the factory cut sides, finished sides, or selvage, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna fold it and let them meet. Then we're just going to gather it up the middle this is so gorgeous. Just try to keep it in the middle. Bring it together and put it in. So I am going to choose to put all of mine going in this way. You could also change it up. Maybe I will change it up. Hmm. I think I'll change it up. So I'm gonna skip this one over to here. I'll just turn it. I'm gonna, this one would go this way. Oh, the decisions. All right, I'm gonna turn this one around. Now when you do this, you've got a cut edge, so you don't wanna mess with it a lot, okay? Just want to get it in there. So that will be very, very pretty. Just give it a little, separate those out a little bit. So all I'm doing is tugging right by the pipe cleaner, which gives it a little bit more lace. Just go in, let me get it down here where you can see what I'm doing. Just go in and tug a little bit right there at the pipe cleaner where it meets. So it kind of separates the mesh a little bit so you can see all the colors. These are cut to 20 inches today. Normally you can do this and you can cut them at 15 inches and get a really full wreath. But because this is the ombre, um, I wanted it to be a little bit more lacy today and I was planning on pulling these out. When you have a little bit more to um, length to work with, you can pull them out and they separate a little bit easier. I have found. So again, just hold your hand over on the finished side and just try to keep it to the center as best as you can. Just like that. So we're doing every other one and we're putting them in the lengthwise on the top today. And the reason that I like to put them in that way is that you're going to see when I get down to the bottom how nicely it will lay up against the door. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> good, Ariane, good. <laughs> That's the plan. 
I'm gonna flip these over and I'm gonna I'm gonna get my aggravation early. Okay, so when you get to the center of your roll, the very end of it, this is how curly they are. Okay, so and the curlier they are, the more exasperating they can be to work with. So we're not gonna we're not gonna sweat it. So I like to use these pieces first. I don't know why, because probably by the time I'm done doing them, I'm done doing them. <laughs> so we're going to be aggravated early, and then we're just going to sail through the other pieces at the end. <laughs> just take your time. Make sure that you're keeping them even over on your one edge. Okay? Now, you want to make sure because one side is green and one side is burgundy. So you can also flip these so that you've got a burgundy on top and you've got a green on the bottom. I'm putting mine in all the same today. I'm curling them over. Just remember when you've got cut edges like these are, you just want to make sure that you're not overhandling them. Okay? This is going to be really nice and full when we get that done today. So it's Friday. It's my Tuesday, but it's your Friday. I'll be excited for you guys. I can give you an update on my, my garage. So it's all framed. The wrap is on, the sheeting is on. It's just the little details. I think they're finishing the overhang today. And then the roof will be going in. So we're excited about that. It won't be long and it'll be done. Then we just have to um, paint the epoxy on the floor. And after that, we'll get the garage door um, installed in the opener. And we'll be moving in. I know, it just seems like it's just taken forever. And of course, it rained this morning, and there's still threat of rain for the rest of the day, but at the moment, it's just stinking hot and humid. So, they sent us the wrong size header that goes over the garage door. So code here is it has to be the whole length of the front of the garage. And so we had to take that back out and have a, a new one delivered, the right size, 22 foot. And <laughs> so that's that was a setback for a day because they couldn't bring it right back out. Um, if you guys want to type supplies into the comments, you're going to get a pop-up in Messenger. And um, this happened to come from the wreath shop. So you'll get a direct link to where all my supplies came from today. So the wreath form and the ribbons and um, that I'm using today came from Deco Exchange. So there's a link on there for that. And... Uh, but the mesh itself came from the wreath shop. And I'm going to tell you, they get a lot of new stuff every day, both Deco Exchange and the wreath shop. Uh, Deco Exchange, when I tell you something's available, 
and you see it, it's kind of like Costco and Sam's, buy it now because he sells out really, really quick. Both the Wreath Shop and Deco Exchange um, stock really high quality products for very good prices. So I, I wouldn't steer you to a place that isn't any good. They're both very, very good, and I shop a lot at both. And I've never been disappointed with anything I've bought at either place. Boy, that's, that's hard to uh, claim sometimes, but I, I just haven't. They're fast shipping. Um, I believe the Reese Shop has free shipping at $89. Deco Exchange has free shipping at $100. Sometimes that's the make or break. So it's kind of nice to get that free shipping. Now when I order stuff from my wholesalers, I have to pay the freight. There's no free shipping at any of the wholesalers. So, um, Take advantage of the free shipping. Okay, you guys, what do you think of that top row? Isn't that gorgeous? Doesn't it just scream fall at you? It's kind of like driving to see all the leaves turn. That's just exactly what that reminds me of. Okay. Let's continue on with our, with our curlies. Now we're going to go down to the bottom. We've got all of them in at the top. There's eight on the top and ten on the bottom. So there's always 18 on these pre-made wreath forms. So, um, and I suggest that if you're using um, your own and putting the pipe cleaners on and everything, still eight on the top for a 15 inch ring. Eight on the top and ten on the bottom. Okay. And you notice that I'm, I'm gathering these the same. I'm putting the um, burgundy to orange copper color on top every single time I'm doing the same. Now you can change yours out and flip this over and do every other one so that you have the green and the burgundy on top and on bottom, switch it around. That's up to you. <clears throat> Okay, so the reason that I put these in the lengthwise is because it fills up my center really, really nice, okay? So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, so, and here again, I'm gonna try and match. So I'm going to switch this around so that my um, fold is going the same way on this one, okay? I'm going to try and get my my folded edge to match my um, factory edge. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to go up and down lengthwise. This is going to be really full, so I'm not worrying about filling in beside. But look how nicely this is laying up against my table which, when it gets on a door, it's gonna lay that nice up against a door. That's why I like to go that way on the bottom. On the top, I like to fill in the center. It just makes it look a lot more full when you do it that way. I'm going to match, flip it over. And I'm just doing like one inch, making my fingers move about an inch for my gathers. Just want to make sure that you're um, staying in the middle. Okay, so this one, the next one, is going to go 
up. Wherever I am. Up. I'm, I'm right-handed, so I go right to left. You left-handers will go left to right, no doubt. So you're getting the idea. So there's two of them that are in. See how pretty that is and how full it is? And this really goes uh, pretty fast. When I don't have to wrestle anything and it's just, you know, repetition, it makes it so much easier and less frustrating. This would be a good technique if this is the first time or the first few wreaths that you're making. It's one way to only use one roll of mesh. So if I were to put this in on the poof method, I'd be coming back with some 10 inch mesh to fill in. And so at least with this, um, you don't, you're only using one roll of mesh when you do this. So now I know I need to switch this around. Kind of fun to do the every other one. Gives it a little um, added dimension, I think. And when you get all done, take the time to go back through and get it fluffed before you add your sign or anything to it. Lefties. I see a lot of lefties. My dad was a lefty. So is my oldest brother. They're both lefties. And they're both very creative. Very creative. My dad could build anything. And my brother... He was in the asphalt business for years and years and years and had all kinds of inventions and patents and very creative, the both of them. Okay, so I'm ready for this one to be up. Both of my boys, my husband's right-handed and both of my boys are right-handed. My youngest son is almost ambidextrous, I have to say. Oh, I've got one more aggravator we're going to use, and then we can go to the easy ones. Ah. <laughs> oh. I'm really liking these ombre looks. So the other night I did the ombre Rita petal flower on the Unique in the Creek boards. I like those gradient shades. You can be um, really creative with those. Vicki, it's cut at 20 inches. And so we're folding the factory edges together and we're gathering it and we're being careful not to smash the folded edge and we're just gathering it up the middle and putting it in our wreath and we're turning it every other way when we go to put it in
you're going to have some spots that's going to back up the folds together and the factory edges together. It just isn't going to matter. Um, eventually, it'll be one of each. 20 inches. 21 inch mesh cut to 20 inches. I'm just folding it to the factory edges together. And I'm laying it out. I hold my left hand or your right hand if you're a lefty on the factory edge. I get my straight start. I just start up the middle and I pinch about every one inch to gather it up. Try and stay in the middle. Move your hand up as you need to. Just like that. And I'm putting them in the long way. Because it lays nicer up against the door on the bottom. And on the top, it fills in the center really, really nice. Get them pressed in really tight. And I'm separating right down at the um, pipe cleaner where it's tight in. You want to take it and just separate it a little bit to cause a little more laciness, a little more fullness. Now normally, um, when I'm doing the um, 21 inch ruffle, I only cut them to 15 inches and it gives you a really full wreath. But with the different ombre colors in my mesh today, I wanted to make sure that I had a lot of ruffling going on. So I changed it up and I cut them to 20 inches. Now you can still get 18 pieces out of one roll of mesh at 20 inches. So. It'll save you money making wreaths to not have to go back and fill in. When we do the, the poof method, it ends up, you've got little indentations wherever your chenilles are. So we always go back and we fill those in with 10 inch ruffle, mesh ruffles. You don't have to do that with this one. It just works out great. And if you wanted to, you know how I started creating this ruffle? was I had um, some expensive fabric mesh in the color that I wanted that was 10 inches. I did a poof wreath and I what didn't want to use my fabric mesh because I had plans for it. So I had a roll of 21 inch mesh, the right color that I wanted. So I thought, well, I'm going to make this work. And this is what I did. And I cut them at 15 inches and they went into the poof wreath just fine. So if you ever find yourself, you've already got your project all going and oops, I don't have the 10 inch mesh that I need. Just use 21 and do this method. And again, you've got some cut edges on here, so don't don't mess with it too much because you don't want to have any raveling. This is a really good um, mesh that isn't raveling on me. So that's a plus. It's really filling in really, really nice. But do you see how these bottom pieces are just kind of hugging my table really nice? That's because of the direction that we're putting those ruffles in. Okay, it looks like we're down to about four more pieces to go in. And then we are going to add our sign, our bow. And I've got a few picks that I'm thinking about putting in. I haven't totally decided yet, but we'll see. Just one roll, when you cut it at 15 or 20 inches, you can get 
make one wreath out of one roll of mesh. This is also great if um, you have some value mesh that you want to get rid of or use up. This is also a good one for um, using the value mesh because it makes it a lot more dense. So, because I cut these at 20 inches, I'm just trying to separate out so that each piece is curling on its own. That just looks like a couple of forests of trees as you go down the road. I'm just trimming up a couple of strays here. Okay, we're down two pieces. Let's get those in. Hey, Jeannie, welcome. So I was on a couple of lives last night on my lunch hour at work and everybody's talking about this dust that's coming at us. So, I'm like, I haven't heard about that. <laughs> I've been purposely not watching news lately. Sometimes ignorance is bliss, and about right now it is, isn't it? Okay, we're ready to switch this around and put this one in like this. See how pretty the folded side ruffles around? I really would have liked a little darker green on the stems and I was looking for one and then I thought no this will pick out the stripe in the or match the green in my mesh so I'm gonna go for it and I'm really glad I stuck with that instead of the darker green but our ribbons gonna have the moss green the darker green in it Lean, good morning to you too. Last one going in. Do you guys get as excited as I do when you're on your last one? <laughs> That's just me. So do y'all have big plans for your weekend? It won't be long, it'll be 4th of July weekend, won't it? Time flies so fast. It didn't when we were kids, but boy, well, that we're older. Can't keep up. All right. Okay, she's all done. Is that gorgeous? Hey Sharon, welcome, welcome. Okay, so our sign is going to work just great on this one. So I've already put my zip ties on and I'll share something else with you too. Um, these are the um, zip tie holders and when you're putting them on wood, just the regular tack doesn't work. It'll stay really good on a metal sign, but on the wood, 
I use E6000. And when I was prepping for this live is when I glued those on. This will last even with the heat outside. And one other thing, black is for outdoor use and white is for inside use. <laughs> Amen, sure, Susan. Okay, so I'm going to get my sign on and then I'm going to worry about my bow. So I know, let me see if I can find... Well, I got a couple of green. I don't have any light green. I'm just going to use these brown ones. So I know already that I'm going to extend my pipe cleaners on one side at least. Because we've got our um, mesh all nice and fluffed. We don't want to flatten it down. So I'm just going to put these through. Welcome, Joanne. I did. I use a rotary cutter. There are several types you can get. I've got a couple different kinds. I have a Fiskars. And then I just have, I don't even know what brand this is, but this one is just slide it down, and this one is push it forward. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. They even have the kind that you squeeze the trigger to get the blade down. These are zip tie mounts, or cable mounts. Cable mounts. You can pick them up at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store. You want to buy the black ones because they're for outdoor use. I think they have a different composition of the glue pad. This is what they look like. So on the back, you have um, a sticky that you pull off. You just peel that off and you stick it on. Okay, so these work really good to just peel and stick on um, metal signs, but on the wood ones, you need to use a little bit of glue with it, and we use um, E6000. So when you're using these, there are four holes that you can choose from. You just feed your pipe cleaner through, just like this. And you can go from either direction. There's four holes on each side. Real simple and easy. Or you can take a staple gun and you can just staple your pipe cleaners on there too. It's up to you. I have both. If you're going to do the staple gun, you're going to need to use uh, 1 4 inch staples. So this one is thick enough. So this one is not thick enough, okay? So what I do then is take a piece of cardboard and put it either underneath the pipe cleaner or on top of the pipe cleaner and staple so that it adds a little more um, depth to the piece of wood. That's just what I do. All right, so I know that I'm going to put in, I haven't decided what I'm gonna put in there. I, I mean, I know I want just a few of these to come in. So, sorry. Thank you, jo Joanne. I would, no, because the hot wood can melt. When it gets really, really hot, your hot wood can melt, or your hot glue can melt. Um, Sherry, you can pick those up. Um, I think Deco Exchange sells them. Um, if you want to add them to your shipment to get up to the free shipping level, or you can get pick them up at 
Lowe's, Home Depot, any lumber yard store like that. Walmart maybe does carry them. I, I don't know. I, for sure. Okay, so I know I'm probably going to put this in right about here. So, and I always try to go through my mesh so that it makes it a little more stable. It'll stay where I want it. And I am not going to have to extend my pipe cleaner on this one. I'm just going to go ahead and flip that over. And don't. I do know that I want to grab that over here. Oh, I'm mini pearl in it today. I forgot to cut my tag off my my wreath form. Ah. Uh, things can happen. Okay, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get this side now. I haven't cut any of my chenilles off and I'm deciding whether or not I want to cut these off because I personally think that they're just beautiful. So I may not. I don't know. I might just curl these today. I have to tell you, the underneath side of this is just as pretty as the front. Okay, our sign is not going anywhere. We've got it on. So I'm just going to turn this to see about where I want to put my bow on. I think I'll have my bow just right about here. I don't want to take away from the fact that my sign is curved, so I want to be careful about how I'm putting my bow in. I think we'll just do it right there. Then I can figure out how I'm going to put So, again, I'm not putting my bow in yet. So, anytime you can get by without gluing in a pick, and you can just use your, your ties to get it in, take advantage of that. So, we're basically going to have these all hidden by our bow. So just bend it as you need to to hit your ties. Okay guys, it looks like Deco has added some more. I just got a notification that Deco Exchange has just added some more product in their warehouse. So You're going to want to take advantage of that. Let's just fluff this out a little bit. We don't want to hide our sign. We just want to accentuate it. This is just a uh, Hobby Lobby. See how I've used my pick I added to hide the stem in here? <laughs> my friend Betty when she comes on and I've forgotten to take a, a sticker off of something she'll yell mini, mini pearl at me and I'll know I've screwed up I haven't taken a sticker off <laughs> she's so funny oh Judy thank you honey Judy is a member of my design studio, my paid group. 
So I teach it quite a bit on my lives, but I get a little more in depth in my design studio. Judy's one of those people that's going to tell you you got a piece of spinach on your front tooth. <laughs> uh, she's witty as all get out. I love her. Okay, let's get our bow in here. So I extended my pipe cleaners to put my bow in because I don't want to pucker my bow at all. Penny Pearl was something else, wasn't she? I grew up on hee haw. That my parents were all country. That's what I learned. And the first country song I ever sang, way out of tune, guys, was Ring of Fire. And who, who who sung that? Probably Brenda Lee. Brenda Lee was my dad's favorite country singer. Who did sing Ring of Fire? Anybody know? Oh my gosh, I just thought I was going to be a singer when I grew up. But let's just be honest here and let it be known. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. I have to be in the first pew at church so I'm not singing at anybody in front of me. <laughs> That's just the way it is. So I've got options here. I've got another pick I can put in that's different from the one that I had. I can put this one in, right, going right up here. Was it Johnny Cash? For some reason, there was a lady that sang it, too. Yeah, he did sing it. I remember that now. Johnny Cash did sing Ring of Fire. You know what? I think I have another one of those. First ones that I put in. Maybe not. Let me see. This one's too big for up top. I think we are going to stick with... We're going to stick with this little one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to get my chenille here. And I'm going to get that in as far as I can. And I'm going to twist my chenille around here. So I'm going to um, shoot a little hot glue where I need to on my um, picks that I'm putting in. I want to get all the way down to the base. Put this where I want it up top. And then we'll go back and hide the mechanics of that. Slide it a little bit. want that to be right down in there where my bow is. So I think that we interpreted our mesh really well. Let me ask you a question. When you all think of garden, do you think of the beginning of summer and planting or do you, do you think of harvest time? I was asking myself that today when I was trying to decide 
what all I wanted to put in this wreath to accent my sign. And I'm thinking, I always think of harvest time in the garden. That's just me though. Okay, the last thing that I wanna do is put me a little but couple butterflies in here. So, um, I just want to, now, a monarch butterfly would be really, really pretty in here, but it isn't gonna stick out that way. So we're gonna use these um, really high colored ones because we want people to see them, okay? So that's why I'm going with what I'm going with. These are just little clip-ons. I'm gonna let my string on my, my sign go. I need to turn it around. Yep, I'm leaving the rope on the sign. It adds to it. It's got two holes in there. So I, I'm going to leave it. I think this butterfly is gonna live right up here. Right here by this leaf. I can get it clipped on there. I'm gonna let him be up there by those leaves. And this one's gonna be right down here. I think we're just gonna put it on the end of our pipe cleaner down here. Our chenille. I'm not liking that one up here. See what I'm going to do with that. I want one up this way. It's just going to land right there is where he's going to land. All right. So, find the top. This is our wreath today. Yep, the rope is gonna stay on the sign. I think it needs it. I'm gonna work on my, my ribbon tails down here. I curl a few. Anybody have any more questions? It's almost time to start doing all of the harvest things. Our strawberries are in and ready to be picked. A couple of strawberry patches are open for self-pick. So that was kind of an eye-opener. And I think we, are, we have some sweet corn that's close. And I think they, I saw that somebody had some tomatoes already. My brother plants the best tomatoes. And he has these old rusty tin coffee cans that he's cut the top and bottom out of. And uh, he trims everything off of his tomato plants and then he puts one roll aid and a fourth of a banana peel in that coffee can down in the dirt before he um, covers it all up. And his tomatoes are the sweetest and the least acidic that I have ever had. Okay, I'm gonna call that. Let me get it to top where the top is. There we go, now I do. <sighs> yep, we went, we don't want to, we want our butterflies to stick out, okay? We don't, if, we, if you're going to put a butterfly in, I, monarch is what I was thinking in the beginning, and I, 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 I think I left it in the other room, but you couldn't see it, so I decided I was going to, I was going to put these in. They're clip-ons, so if, the customer doesn't want them, they can take them off. If you're going to put something in, make sure it pops and you can see it. 
Okay, I'm going to sign off because I have to go to work today. Um, I uh, will be here tomorrow at 1 o'clock for both Saturday. And I think I should be getting another couple of cases of bow makers today. So I'll, I'll make sure I restock those in my Etsy shop. So I'll see you tomorrow for more bow fun. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. I hope that um, you got as much out of this one as I did. And uh, have a great weekend. Bye, guys.